morning. How's everybody doing today? I heard on the uh, weather that it's supposed to be a beautiful day later today in Miami. Um, but uh, we got to remember days like this. It's uh, the, the Lord made it. Let, let us rejoice and be glad of it. That is the best way to look at it. Um, as far as touching on the announcements printed in the bulletin, we're beginning to take donations. Um, have been for a while for the Christmas shop. You can bring items here or the egg shop. And the Christmas shop is taking place on Saturday, December 4th from 9 to 2, 8, 2 p.m. Uh, Pastor Ashley said we could still use plenty of help. It's going to be a lot of things going on, a lot of things to do, uh, wrapping presents, uh, doing a lot of different things. Uh, so please let Pastor Ashley or the mission team know if you're able to help, and that would be great. Uh, there's no such thing for a project like this as too much help. So uh, We're going to be having an ad board meeting Monday, November 22nd at 6 o'clock in the basement. That's a week from tomorrow. Uh, Reese Across America orders should be submitted by tomorrow. There's an envelope in the back of the church. And the 2021 National Rem <coughs> Remembrance Ceremony will be at the Cisna Park Legion Saturday, December 18th at 11 a.m., and at that point, uh, the volunteers will be taking Reese to the various cemeteries and put him on the veteran's graves. Uh, hanging of the greens, uh, it's penciled in. That will be next Sunday after church. Uh, if anyone's able to stay and help out, that would be much appreciated. Uh, are there any other announcements this morning we need to share? Wednesday night Bible study. Wednesday night Bible study. 6.30? Yes, and we're studying the book of Matthew. book of Matthew. This coming Wednesday at 6.30. Very good. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. <coughs> if not, please join me in the call to worship as we read responsibly. We are chosen by the King of Kings. Not for our looks. Not for our good works. Not because we're strong. We belong in the family of God. Amen. Our opening hymn is Since Jesus Came Into My Heart, number 212040, the Black Book. The words will also be on the screen. Please stand if you're able.
invite you to remain stand, standing and you may join me in the opening prayer. Almighty creator of the universe and loving father of us all, every rainbow reminds us that you are in control of the earth, of nature, of the seasons, and of the end. Your spirit enriches the earth with the gift of life to all creatures, including all the varieties of birds and animals. Help us to care for the environment so that the earth is a healthier place to live for our children and all the generations who follow us. We thank you for your son, our Lord Jesus, who has taken all our sins, especially those we are ashamed of from our past, and paid for them on the cross even before we were born. Renew us to be more humble and loving like he is, so through us people can draw nearer to you. Strengthen us as we partner with you in the holy work of your kingdom, as your friends sent with your message of love, and stewards of all you have given. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will move into our time of sharing any joys, any concerns that we have that we would like to lift up to the Lord today and to pray with the congregation. Lou. Our uh, granddaughter, Jane Gilman, and, uh, and her family also, uh, she's having some problems right now. She needs a lot of prayer. Okay. So we were asked to keep the Tillman family in our prayers today. Any others? Jerry Gay? I have a joy. Okay, a joy. My uh, oldest grandson's coming from Florida the 28th, so pray for safe travel home. Okay, so that is a joy. Jerry Kay's grandson is coming to visit. So <coughs> wonderful. Thank you. Pam? Sally Jean is home. Okay. Sally Jean is home, and I was going to add to that, too. Um, Val is with her this morning. She has had some really bad coughing going on, so Val is taking her in this morning to get some chest x-rays done. So joy that she's home, but also a concern. Keep her in our prayers this morning. Alice? Okay, so he is recuperating from pneumonia, but he is at home, so that's a good thing. Thank you. Larry? I got a text from Tootie. Her son, Troy, had surgery, and it was very, very successful. That is a joy. Troy's surgery was successful. Thank you. Anyone else? I have... Um, just one that I'd like to add. We have a lot of people who are uh, from our church family who are traveling right now. So just travel mercies for all those who are driving, flying, whatever they are doing. Um, you know, especially as the weather's changing and all that. Okay, if there are no other um, requests, we will go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> Gracious and merciful God, we thank you for being able to come together this morning to worship you in your house. Lord, and the weather is changing, it is getting cold and damp, but we are still here and we are thankful. Um, Lord, we just want to lift up to you a couple of requests um, from our church family going up right now. Um, Lord, for Sally Jean, um, we are very grateful that she was able to come home, but she's having some challenges with some coughing. So Lord, I just pray that you be with her today. Please be with Val as she's taking her to get checked out. And we pray that it's good news that she receives um, as she moves forward so she can deal with this. Lord, we'd also like to lift up the Tillman family um, and Jaden as they are facing some challenges right now. Lord, you know what they need, so we just ask that you please be with them. Please strengthen, please fortify them as they continue to move forward. Um, Lord, uh, we are also very thankful, this is a joy, that Dennis is at home um, and he is recuperating. Thank you, Lord, for this. Um, but 
he is still having to use oxygen and it still be challenging the next few days forward. So we just ask that you please be with him and please bring him comfort as well as he moves forward. Lord, we'd also like to lift up those who are traveling right now. We have a lot of church family members in different places. So we just ask that you please bring them travel mercies, safety, comfort, and that they enjoy where they are at this time. Lord, a couple more joys we are so thankful for. Lord, we thank you for Troy's successful surgery. Lord, this is great, great news, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for this. And Lord, we are also excited for Jerry Kay that she will be able to see her grandson um, very soon, in just a couple of weeks. Please bring him travel mercies too as he journeys home um, to see his family and see his friends during this time. And gracious God, um, if there are any other prayer requests, concerns, joys that are going unspoken now, we lift them up to you. You know what everybody needs. And Lord, we are so thankful for that. We are so thankful for your sovereignty. We just ask that you meet each and every one of those people where they are at um, and bring them comfort and peace at this time. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will now have our time of offering. If you weren't able to drop your envelope off, Prior to church, you may do so after service as we dismiss. Sure. and building is always before us. We give our gifts this day in hopes that we might be co-builders with you in the creation of your kingdom here on earth. May our gifts also reach others who are hurting, <coughs> who feel disconnected from your love, that they too may join us in the stonework of kingdom building, whose mortar is the sharing of Christ's love with the world. In Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> you may be seated. Today's scripture is from the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3 and 15 through 21. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth, and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens were re was restrained, and the waters gradually receded from the earth. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. 
So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. And every animal, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth, went out of the ark by families. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and burnt and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind, for the inclination of the human heart is evil from you, nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Thank you, Carrie. Let's begin with a prayer before we start the message today. Merciful Lord, thank you for another Sunday to worship in your house. Thank you, Lord, for partnering with us as we go on this journey of faith with you. We honor and worship you, Lord, and are grateful for your love, grace, and mercy. Please help to open our hearts and minds to receive the word you have for us today. And please bless the reading, teaching, and preaching of your message. We pray this in your Son's glorious name. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. Um, welcome back to this three-week journey we are taking through this series titled, Get Your Ship Together, focusing on Noah and the journey that he undertook so, so many years ago. Last week, we talked about partnership and how God partners with us in the journeys that we take with him. God entered into a covenant with Noah, and as we learned last week, God is always the one who does the hard work and heavy lifting in all partnerships. He calls us to obey and to walk forward in faith. This week, we'll be learning about the signs of friendship God shows us and what we can do to show friendship to one another as we're called to love and live as Christians. In 2014, the Huffington Post did an article on what makes a good friend, stating that the signs of a good friend include the following. They are present and support us through adversity. They really listen. They call us out when we are in the wrong. They keep our stress in check. They keep us humble. They have our backs when life gets tricky. They practice forgiveness. And they make us want to be better people. I think that we can see many of these examples throughout this story with Noah. Both God and Noah are present during this difficult time. Noah is giving support to his family, and God is giving support to Noah. Noah is also returning the favor by continuing to trust the Lord and his commands. At the beginning of this part of the story from today, we read the following in verse 1. It said, But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. Now, when we hear the word remember, it doesn't mean that God forgot about Noah and all the animals. There is no way that God would forget. But when this word remember is used, it refers to the fact that God acts according to his covenant promises, especially in a way evident to his people, <coughs> according to a source. God is honoring the covenant that he made that we talked about last week. God is doing the heavy lifting and all the hard stuff. Now, we knew from the beginning of this story that God saw and grieved the ugliness of human nature. But we don't know if Noah recognized it the same way that God did. Maybe he did because of his devotion to follow through on this massive task God had given him. Noah might not have ever judged his neighbors because he was a blameless and righteous man with no evil in his heart. There's a popular phrase that goes, if you see something, say something. Meaning, if something wrong is happening, you need to call it out and push for justice and what is right. Noah might have refrained from calling out his neighbors on their troubling behaviors. We as humans do this. We witness things happening that shouldn't or that may need correction. Sometimes we act, sometimes we don't. 
But just as his neighbors would have known about the huge boat sitting in Noah's backyard, Noah probably would have known about all of the murder, the dysfunction, and the evil taking place all around him. But God recognized it and called everyone out with this flood. And Noah listened and followed what he was supposed to do accordingly, thus accepting that second chance God was giving to humanity. God's further support of Noah and helping him through tricky situations can be seen as well. <coughs> when we back up in scripture and think about all of those guidelines, all of those steps that Noah had to take in building the ark, we can see that God had Noah's back. He supported Noah during this process. The task seemed huge and absolutely crazy, but we know that with God, all things are possible. You know, he didn't just tell Noah, go build an ark, and then stop there. He told him exactly what to do. The instructions were so specific and detailed that Noah knew exactly what needed to be done. That's why when we buy something from the store and it requires assembly, the instructions are included to try and relieve the stress of the task. Now, whether or not we follow those instructions is another story, but it comes down to choice. Noah chose to follow those instructions, taking the advice, and God made sure to inform him of what was going to happen. Noah knew the why and the how to get this done, and he continued to remain faithful and follow God's orders. Now, in order to have a successful friendship built on trust and honesty, it needs to be a two-way street. In a friendship between two individuals, both need to put in the work to make the relationship work. Now, I don't know if we've all been through this, but when someone is trying to develop and maintain a relationship, it can be exhausting if only one of those people is putting in the work. Maybe we've all been there at one point or another, I'm not sure, but I have been a part of friendships that have fallen apart after a while because one person or the other does not invest into that relationship. It can be exhausting, it can be unhealthy to love without being loved back, to try to motivate or forgive when that behavior is not returned. I think bad friends can make us appreciate the good ones more through the experience of knowing what hurts and knowing what is good. We can learn how to be better friends through this type of experience if we really think about it. It's kind of a reverse way of learning and thinking, but it can be effective. Now, a friendship with the Lord is always unique to each and every person. And if we look to the example of Noah, we see him sharing in this relationship and putting in the work. He walked in faith and showed his dedication by obeying God's orders and instructions. Verse 20 that we read today tells us that Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. This was Noah's first recorded act after leaving the ark. This was a big deal because it meant the person or people who built the altar did so to show their honor and devotion to God. We see this multiple times, especially in the Old Testament. Noah built the first altar to the Lord, followed by Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, to name a few. And Noah offered a burnt offering, which meant it was an act of complete faith and devotion to God. So few animals existed at this point. Remember, they were all on the ark with Noah. And God had commanded that they all go out and multiply. But Noah offered this sacrifice even while the animals were few. This was costly to Noah and his family, but it demonstrated their trust in God to provide for them. Noah was motivated by his partnership and friendship with God. He continued to remain faithful and believe and trust 
that God would provide in this new world that was beginning. It would be built on a foundation of faith and obedience as they moved forward and continued to walk in this journey. So how can we be good friends to humanity and to God? Something we can do is listen. And I mean really listen. Listen to understand, not respond. Listen to learn, not just react. So many great conversations have happened over coffee or a meal. Writing a letter or a card seems like a lost art nowadays. That it's such a surprise to receive one in the mail. Also, making a phone call just to talk is one of those lost arts too. It's much easier to email or to text nowadays that by not making as many phone calls anymore, we're losing connections. For God, being in prayer, reading scripture, listening for God to speak to us in a variety of ways, this also takes intentionality. And I think God will speak to us most often in our quiet and still moments that if we're not intentional or tuned in, we could miss it. Another way to be a good friend and foster a relationship is to learn about the person. And this goes right with listening to understand. I love the old saying that God gave me two ears and one mouth for a reason. It reminds me to open my ears more than I open my mouth. When you listen, you can learn what makes the person tick, learn their desires, their motivations, listen to stories, and ask questions. And with God, we can learn so much by reading scripture, participating in Bible studies, going to God in prayer, and asking him to reveal himself to us. That is when we will all notice how God works into the different vocabulary of our lives and the rhythms of our lives. Then we can ask what our friend needs. Once we listen and learn, we are to do as well. If they desire to pursue a goal or a dream that they have, how are you able to support that person? If they need support of some kind, how can you meet that need? When it comes to God, when was the last time that we asked what he desires, what he dreams? What is his will for each of us? This helps foster the friendship and develop a deeper connection. And then, of course, with any friend, we should keep in touch with them. This comes through our process of listening, learning, seeking, and it should be regular. There are so many ways to communicate now and so quickly, too, that we can figure out ways to make those connections even better. But with God, don't wait. Reach out in prayer. Reach out through reading scripture. The longer we wait, it gets harder and harder for us to reach out. We can grow apart from him if we put it off and not carve out intentional time. We can come to church to be in the presence of the Lord and his community of faith. We come to worship and can worship through prayer, song, reflection. When we take communion, we have a physical connection with God through the body and blood of Jesus offered out to us out of love. Then we should express our feelings as well. Human friends can't read our minds, and sometimes when feelings are not expressed, it can cause misunderstanding or conflict. When we express feelings of happiness or joy, stronger bonds are formed. When we express feelings of hurt or doubt, those bonds are formed as well. With God, he already knows our feelings. He knows what we're thinking, but it never hurts to share these thoughts and emotions with the Lord. It's part of that, that two-way street I talked about earlier, the work that we need to do to put into that relationship. It's regular communication with God who loves us so, so deeply. And then lastly, we should express our gratitude to our friends and to the Lord. True friends are there to love and support and lift us up when we're down and to celebrate in times of joy. 
We should be thankful to them and be that good friend to others. And we should always, always, always praise God. Noah expressed his gratitude to God through the burnt offerings. And although we don't do those anymore, we still need to express our gratitude. Even if you pray a simple prayer of, thank you, God, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit, it is still a way of showing thanks. Now, to end today, God responded to Noah and humanity in Genesis 8, 21 through 22, which states, And when God, or when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind. For the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth. Nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. As long as the earth endures seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Praise God we can trust in this promise as we move forward into this glorious relationship. Let's pray together. To the Most High Lord, thank you for showing us the true meaning of friendship. Thank you for being merciful and sovereign and for knowing us so well that we can come to you in times of strife, in times of joy, in times of confusion, and in times of happiness. We are so grateful you keep all of your promises and for the grace you give us. Your mercies are new every morning. Help us to continue to walk in obedience and to further develop our friendship with you. We worship you today, Lord. Thank you for all that you you to stand as you are able to sing What a Friend, number 526 in the red hymnal and on the screen.
invite you to join me in this responsive benediction. Go and testify to God's faithful promises. God's covenant is everlasting. Go and follow God's ways. The ways of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. The time is now. Go forth with God's blessing and proclaim this great news. Amen. Thank you all. Go in peace and have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you.